Thank you very much for that, Cronin, and good morning, everybody. Um, I think I'm honoured to have the first, the first speak, so thank you very much for that. Um, as Cronin mentioned, so I'm Clean Mooney, and um, I'm Head of Subscriptions and Reader Insights at the Irish Times. Um, that's a, a role that wouldn't have existed four or five years ago, really, in our industry, and that's really the theme of what I'd like to talk about today. Um, the media industry in particular is one that is undergoing and continues to undergo a lot of change, um, and it's really about how we introduced a culture of data into the organization to help move uh, that, change, that change process along. Um, in terms of the industry itself, <coughs> Our audience base has really moved from this, so some of you probably got the, the bus or the train or the Lewis in here this morning. Uh, back in the day, we would have seen much more uh, printed newspapers in use, in circulation, um, in readership. And uh, when you came in this morning, it was probably more like everybody on their phones, uh, everybody on their devices in that sense. So in terms of that industry, we're really looking to move along with where our audience is, um, and what they're looking for in that sense. But I think what's core is that the core of the Irish Times is quality journalism, and that remains the same. So our core offering is the same, and it's really about how we reach the audience and how we can uh, continue um, to reach our audience and add value in that, in that sense of it. A little history of the Irish Times, um, it's almost 160 years old um, and um, it actually was one of the, uh, the first newspaper companies in the UK and Ireland to launch a website in the 90s, so we do have a bit of a history in being a, a trailblazer in that sense of it. Um, but what we started out um, about four years ago now, um, the area of big data and media was, was really hotting up. Um, and we set about looking at what data we had available to us and how we could put that to use. Um, one thing that was key for us was that we did not want to be jumping on the big data bandwagon for the sake of it. We didn't want to be analysing data for the sake of it. It had to drive insight uh, for the company. It had to add value in that sense. Um, so for us, it was really about giving people in the organisation the information they needed to make informed decisions. So that was really our mission, um, was giving them the inf that information for that purpose. Um, before we set up the, um, the analytics function, I suppose just to give you a sense of, of the Irish Times um, back then, the company was very much focused towards the printed newspaper and publishing that every day. So the, the structure of the day and the organisation and shifts was led towards getting a printed newspaper out at the end of the day. Um, so we published all our online articles on irishtimes.com. The majority of them were published at one o'clock in the morning after the newspaper had been put to bed and then the content went online. Um, the first editorial conference of the day was on at 12 noon uh, in the afternoon and the editorial conference is the first meeting of the day where the editors of the various departments, news, business, sport, um, get together and discuss the big news of the day and how, the big stories of the day and how we're going to treat them uh, as the day goes on. Um, we didn't have an analytics function. Uh, reporting was done probably more so on a monthly, uh, monthly basis. Um, all content on irishtimes.com back then was freely available. Um, and we didn't know how, we knew readership figures, but we didn't know, say, who was reading this article on the top left corner of page five or how many people were reading them. So we didn't have much insight in terms of the content readership um, at that point. Um, so when we set about um, building the, the analytics function, we looked at the data we had and how we could structure it, um, and that was, I mean, that was just a, t a technical challenge to overcome, but really it was about what did people need, what information did they need from us. So the stakeholders for us and the customers of our um, department, the analytics team is a centralised function in the Irish Times. It's not just editorial, it's senior management, it's customer care, it's marketing, it's advertising. These are all our stakeholders and we wanted a company-wide approach to, uh, to analytics and, and what data was needed for that. Um, so a couple of things that, that we did that I would recommend, I suppose, in that sense. One is to ask the questions of the stakeholders of what decisions are they making? What decisions are they making on a daily, weekly, monthly basis? It's not about asking them the technical questions of what, do they, what data do they need. It's really listening to what it is that decisions that they're making and how we can help them in that sense. Um, what leads on and core to that is hiring the right people. Um, so the holy grail is hiring technical analysts who have communication skills, who have great communication skills. And sometimes you need to build a hybrid team that has um, you know, the different people with different skill sets because communication is absolutely key when bringing people along and having conversations with uh, less technical um, stakeholders in the organisation. 
Also key is finding the evangelists within the organization. So um, a couple of people say on the editorial side who, who got the data, who understood how it could be put to use, and they can help spread your message. So analytics shouldn't be a silo. It can't work um, in isolation. It needs to be working with, uh, with other departments. So find your evangelists to help spread that word. Um, we also at the start got a couple of quick wins. So it's not really about going to the organization and say, we need all this investment, we need to set up uh, this, this uh, analytics function and this technology. Um, you need a few quick wins to show people, to win people over, and finding what, uh, what would pique the interests of various people, find a little data nugget for them, and that'll help win them over, because there can be skepticism around uh, the use of data and how it can be, can be put to use. Um, Building trust with the stakeholders is also key. And again, this might be more specific to the media industry, but we're talking about journalists and their own personal work. Um, this isn't a product on shelves. Um, there can be skepticism around data. Data can be the stick to beat us with. So it's very important to build that trust um, with, uh, with the organization and um, build, uh, build relationships with them in that sense. And the last thing I'd say just on our um, side, the, the, the mission for us was to be a data-informed organization and not Data led, and that is key. That the editorial integrity of the Irish Times is key. Um, and say, if we were a data led organisation, the Irish Times homepage that you'd see would be completely driven by an algorithm of the most popular stories. And that's not what our readers come to us for. Um, they come for our editorial judgment uh, on the important stories of the day. So that's where we aim to give people the information they need to make the important decisions, and they can choose how they use that that information then. Um, so the organization now, uh, after all of that, I would say is reader obsessed, but in a good way and in a healthy way. Uh, we put the reader at the center of everything that we do uh, organization wide. So in terms of who our journalists are writing for, in terms of our, uh, our advertising, our marketing um, and other departments. So we're really looking at who and where are our readers, what are they reading, when, on what devices. Um, and for what the data can't tell us, we enhance that with research. So asking them the whys. Why do they do that? What do they want? What would they like to see more or less of? Um, so really is that reader at the center um, of everything that we're doing. So a couple of examples of, um, of the data in use, a couple of top line examples from the editorial side. When we look at when and where our readers are coming to our site, this graph has shown a typical day. The blue line is desktop traffic and the red line is mobile traffic. So what you'll see on that is that um, earlier in the morning, mobile traffic starts coming through. So this is as soon as people wake up, they reach for the bedside locker, they're on their phone straight away. They're commuting into the office on their mobile and then they're hitting their desk onto desktop, lunchtime spike on desktop, going home in the evening, and again, we have this evening lift, um, lift that usually peaks at about 10 o'clock at night. You can see from that that when we were publishing all our articles at 1 o'clock in the morning, that wasn't the right time to maximize uh, our, our audience and our readership of that content. So this helps us with our strategy around when we publish and promote our content and what content people would like at different, different hours of the day. Um, a typical Saturday is very much mobile-driven, morning spike, and then people go about their business. And on a Sunday, similar morning spike, uh, but then we have this evening lift as well, and this is what we call the, the Glen Row factor, or you know, when you, you don't have your homework done, you hear the Glen Row theme tune, um, getting ready for the week ahead. And we find things like healthy eating recipes work at this time, because people have had their takeaway on the Saturday night, or they've gone all out, and they're like, I'm going to be healthy next week. This is the start of it. So that kind of works well on a Sunday. So again, this is content that we would have anyway, but it's about how we maximize that content, putting it to the right audience at the right time, right place um, in the format that they needed for. Um, another quick example of it in use um, in terms of real-time monitoring of content as opposed to it being monthly or weekly or daily. Um, an announcement was made last year um, from Buckingham Palace that Prince Philip was standing down for, from public engagements. This was of interest to our readers, but it was a sort of a one-and-done story. When you read it, you, you knew what the story was. We could see that that was doing well, so another story then, an article was published with some of the uh, more controversial remarks that Prince Philip has made uh, in his time and how that manifests itself for our newsroom team is the, the top graph here is showing the traffic and the sources from that first article, uh, which was very much early in the morning, you knew the story and that was it. The second graph then shows how we continued on that story throughout the day um, and knew that that was of interest and, and followed up with it. So that helped to maximize the life um, of that story. 
And another example then, um, again, with this changed mindset from a print focus, with print, um, it's very much a one-day story and then you're moving on to the next, and that doesn't work in the same way from an online context. Example here of the Pope's visit to Ireland and everything you need to know. We published that article about two and a half weeks before the Pope visited. The graph on the right shows the daily traffic to that article. So that uh, article had continued readership right through from the two and a half weeks beforehand to peaking to the time of his visit. Um, it would have been the wrong decision to just publish that uh, the, week, the week that he was coming. Um, so it's really about knowing and, and seeing what is of interest to readers and, and feeding that need for them in that sense. So I suppose now we're really an organisation where we still have the printed newspaper. It's very important to us. But as an example here, when Andrew Kenny stepped down, or said he was stepping down from leader Fine Gael, we would have on the right here the mobile homepage, our optimised, um, newly developed mobile website that is um, optimised for speed. Um, we would have our political journalist uh, doing a piece to camera about the leadership contest. We would have an Inside Politics newsletter, an Inside Politics podcast discussing that, um, social promotion, so Facebook and Twitter posts. Uh, we also had a leadership tracker, um, which we where we asked the TDs who they were voting for out of Simon Coveney and Leo Varadkar and we had this ongoing running which is old school journalism asking the TDs um, but we, we did it in a, a, an online context and kept this going for our readers and all of that alongside doing a four page supplement in print which we would do so we are asking a lot of our journalists now that they do more than uh, writing words in that context and we as an analytics function need to be there to tell them what's working and what's not working we learn from this we have the presidential election coming up and we'll be learning, um, taking the insights from these things as to what works well in that sense as well. Um, so I suppose now as an organisation, from that shift to where we didn't have an analytics function, we had 12 o'clock meeting uh, in the afternoon about editorial um, and we had freely available content. Now, it is what I would call the democratisation of data. So we have, um, we have daily reports going to the entire organisation, company-wide, to keep everybody in the loop informed as to what, um, what people are reading and, and the different patterns like that. In terms of the democratisation of data, I don't believe that analytics should be the key, just have the keys to the data. I feel that it's important that it is shared out and that people don't feel that it's a big secret. The importance there is putting it in a structure, an accessible format, that they can access it and that they can understand it without them being overwhelmed by it. Um, that 12 noon conference, editorial conference, is now at 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, so our motto is uh, win the morning and own the day. If we have a good start to the day, uh, we're, we're on to a good thing. And the analytics team leads out that editorial conference around how yesterday did, how this morning is doing, and that's a big shift um, in mindset in the organisation as well. Um, we've also developed reporter dashboards so that our reporters themselves can see the performance of their own content and given it to them again in a way that is, is accessible for them. We're about to release an app um, in the next couple of weeks on that as well. Um, and I suppose most importantly, we launched a subscription model um, just over three and a half years ago. So um, in that time and with these changes, we have managed to grow, consistently grow our traffic, our readership to irishtimes.com while uh, implementing um, a paywall, a metered paywall model. Um, and we now have 85,000 subscribers on irishtimes.com as well. So the result for us is continuing and growing our user base, having a, a, a subscription service with 85,000 subscribers in it and really turning around that culture and building a culture within the organisation that's 160 years old where there is a serious appetite for data. Some might say too much. Uh, my team are inundated with requests um, for data but it's a really positive um, take up of people of, um, of the use of data and how it can help them to do, to do their job. So that's it from me. Very good. Thank you so much. <laughs>